the following visual summarizes prominent theories of emotion that you should have read about at this point in the reading. The James Lang theory of emotion basically argues that emotions simply follow or come after our body responses to triggering events. So this is the idea that, for instance, we run and then we feel afraid or um, we experience the body arousal, okay, like our heart pounding and our hands trembling, and only after that bodily arousal occurs do we experience fear. Okay, so according to James Lang, bodily arousal comes first, and afterwards we have the subjective experience of saying, I am afraid. Now, stroke victims who have certain forms of body paralysis still feel emotion. So that is one piece of evidence that suggests that the James Lang theory can't be the whole story. Um, it doesn't seem to be the case that bodily arousal in its fullest form is sufficient for emotion. Okay, um, we have people who have paralysis, as I've just said, who can still experience emotion. Um, so how do we explain that from this bodily arousal perspective? Okay, but no doubt for most of our emotions, bodily arousal does play an important part. Now, the Cannon Bard theory uh, was proposed by Walter Cannon in the 1920s, and he argued that we can't be separating the bodily arousal and subjective experience parts of emotions. They simply occur simultaneously together in time. In this example, we see the deer, and at the same time, we experience our heart pounding, our hands shaking, and we feel afraid. Um, this is all happening simultaneously, and there's little use in trying to argue what comes first or second. Um, so that was a very prominent theory. Uh, the two-factor model, okay, this was developed in the 1960s by researchers named Schachter and Singer, and they argued that Basically, emotions depend on two different factors. Okay, the first factor is physiological. Okay, in this case, our heart pounds and our hands tremble as we see the deer cross the road while we're driving. But the second factor is a cognitive appraisal or a cognitive interpretation of what's going on. So according to the two-factor model, when we experience body arousal, we look for cues in the environment to figure out what's going on. Is this a really dangerous situation or not? Okay, just to give you another example, you may see a mountain lion and experience bodily arousal, but if you're at the Tucson Zoo and it's behind a cage um, or not able to attack you, right, you are able to interpret the situation cognitively as being not dangerous. Okay, so according to two-factor model, we have factor one, which is physiological, and factor two, which is our labeling of the event, and they both contribute to what we experience in terms of our emotion. Now, Ledoux's dual pathway model, okay, was put out in the early 2000s by a famous emotion researcher named James Ledoux. Uh, sorry, I meant to say Joe Ledoux. And this is the idea that the brain basically has two different pathways to process emotional information. He calls them a high road and a low road. And in the previous video clip, I've walked through this high, low road idea. Okay, but basically we see the deer, and now here's the low road, fast processing. Okay, the visual information comes through our eye and is processed by the low road, which is a thalamic amygdala pathway and it permits fast responses, okay? Our heart pounds, our muscles tighten, they prepare us for action, okay? This is the fast, low road, very emotional in nature. The sensory information also passes through a high road, okay? This occurs later. This goes up to the cortex and is processed more on a cognitive level. Uh, my God, watch out is the example given here. Uh, but this is the idea that after we have our initial response through the low road, the information or the event can be processed more carefully by higher levels of the cortex. Okay, so Ledoux proposes two different brain pathways that are involved in emotion. Now, 
the answer to which theory is correct and which theory is wrong is still being worked out. To date, there are evidence uh, pieces of evidence, and there are problems for all of these theories. So each one of these theories appears to explain some aspect of emotion, uh, but it also has problems. Again, emotion is a multifaceted construct. We're talking about behavior, physiology, cognitions, and thoughts. So the story of exactly how emotion works is still being worked out, and it's likely to be complicated.